So here we are back where we started. We don't really have much in addition to what we started with anyway. We still have that stick on our pack. We still have the old shirt. We still have the old pants. And I have been picking up bits and pieces of things strewn about the overworld. So if you open up your inventory... Uh, you could basically climb anything, by the way. I, I guess I just glossed over that fact. But it's fun to just see what you can do. All the different places you can go. All the different things you can climb. But if you open up your inventory, there's a bunch of stuff. So you can see all the things that we've already collected. You can sort it. You get food items that will restore your health. Uh, beetles, we don't know what we can do with yet. Materials like amber, opal, the screws. You have your clothing, your weapons. So we only have one bow, different types of arrows. And all the handheld weapons that we can use. Uh, the food is anything that's cooked or baked. And the key items are key items. One other thing about this game is that if you stray too far into a different kind of climate, for instance here it's nice and cold, if you stay there too long you'll start taking damage. I think it's a half your heart for every 10 seconds you spend in it. And there are a number of places like that throughout the game. But there's only, for whatever reason, I believe there's only one specific area that the temperature changes with the time of day. Which is kind of strange, because you'd expect it to be colder during the night and warmer during the day. But there's only one specific area in the game where that happens. I guess it's a good thing for consistency, but not for realism? Maybe it's for realism. It's also getting to be nighttime, which may or may not be a good thing. We see some guys over there, they look like they're having fun, but we can't get up there yet. So let's see if we can shoot down a bridge. I think I missed the rope. The arrows do have a bit of... Uh, what do you call it to them? They have a kind of trajectory. So if you... Come down here, buddy. Come down here, buddy. That works. So if you're a fan of Wind Waker and the fact that you were able to use different enemies' weapons when they dropped them, you'll be right at home with this game. Most of the weapons that you'll be picking up you will have gotten off of enemies that you defeat, which is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing in that there are plenty of weapons for you to use. But it's also a curse in that if you get hit by, say, a 14 strength weapon, it hurts. I don't recommend you do that. So it's a bit of risk versus reward, and you also have a limit on how many weapons you can have, so I'm probably going to drop a few of them. I know you dropped your shield, too. Where'd your shield go? I'll take that shield. And also, since we have a cooking pot here, we can use it to cook things. So let's cook... Uh, I guess we'll cook a few of these. We only have three hearts, so I guess we might as well just stock up on three heart food. Oh, we got a six. Wow. Usually these only give you three. Huh. I guess we lucked out on that one. But you can try mixing things as well and see what those get you. I'm not sure there's anything else I want. Oh yeah, we want to cook the spicy peppers. So the reason they gave us spicy peppers is the fact that these give us cold resistance. And, I again, I'm going to be constantly skipping over cutscenes by accident, just out of habit. But there are a number of things that we can do to negate the effects of the environment that give us buffs either for strength, defense, or in this case, resistance to cold. So by eating that, 
we now that we have one level of cold resistance, we're not going to be harmed by the cold environment here. So we can go about as we please without losing health as long as that cold resistance is in place. So we'll build ourselves a bridge, and we'll cross the icy water. You don't want to fall in the icy water. Considering how little health that we actually have, that will deal much more damage than you realize. So now we just have to make our way up these snowy mountains. And like with many other things in this game, there are a number of different ways you can go about it. You can try to scale the mountain directly, you can try to go around it. In terms of getting through the cold, you can try to use the uh, food item to keep your cold resistance up like we're doing here. There's different types of armor that will prevent you from losing health to cold that we'll see later. And, I mean, it's really interesting to see all of the different kinds of things that you can do to approach a challenge. You can just tank the damage if you want. You've seen we already picked up a lot of health-related food items. If you want to just see how far up you can get and then heal up the damage as you go, you can also take a torch and bring fire with you to keep yourself warm. You just have to run with the torch lit the entire way, but you can do it. That's how I did it my first time. The individual shrines that we have here aren't the best example of multiple solutions to a single problem because they're all designed to show you explicitly how to use that one room. But after this, pretty much every challenge that we come across can be solved several different ways. And that's one of this game's biggest strengths. But here's probably the most situational of the rooms that we'll be picking up, Cryonis. This allows us to create a pillar of ice on any flat surface of water. It, ha it specifically has to be flat, but I think most of them are flat anyway. And for whatever reason, it's magically climbable. Because all ice is climbable, don't you know? You can also use it to go underneath those grates. Uh, was that the button? That was not the button. That was the button. I forgot which button it was. I tried using the bow button. But you can reflect those back. It's fun to do. I almost forgot this thing is here. I never remember to pick this up. I always remember what's in it, but I never remember to pick it up. I think pretty much every shrine has at least one treasure chest for you to pick up. There are specific ones that don't, but they're not really proper shrines anyway. We'll get to those at some point, maybe. I'm not actually sure. I haven't planned out which shrines I want to visit when. I have an idea of how many I want to visit. But I haven't planned out any route, per se. And I think it'd be more fun that way, not knowing where you're going to go. But there are a number of techniques that I've already shown off that we aren't really supposed to be introduced to until later. Hey guys, I'm just gonna just gonna peace out. Uh, what's the button? That's the button. Yeah, so there are a number of techniques that we're able to do whenever we want. Just like the shield surfing I was doing right there. I did a charge attack earlier, we did... Uh, trying to think, what was the other thing that I did that we weren't introduced to yet? Oh yeah, the, the shield attack. There are a number of things that you can do pretty much any time. And the game never explicitly tells you that they're available. You kind of have to seek out different NPCs or different situations where the game will prompt you to do it. Or to at least indicate it's a possibility. So, there are a number of things that you can do at any time, but the game does have a way of showing you when and where you can do it provided that you get there. I, I don't know how else to really say it. There, there's a dude that tells you how to do it. 
I guess that's better than any other explanation I had. I don't know if I've ever seen your lantern actually lit. It's pretty cool looking. So he's going to tell us about a couple of elements of our Sheikah Slate that we can use. So you already saw that we used the scope. It's like a camera. It lets you zoom into places far away. And you can also use it to mark pins, which are the little colored squares. But I'm really just here to get the warm doublet. So this only has one defense, just like our old shirt, but it will give us an extra layer of cold resistance, so we don't need to cook every time we want to go into the cold environments. But yeah, the slate allows us to look around, and if we want to set a pin, I can just hit the A button, and then that thing will show up on our map, so you can see where it is relative to where we are, but I don't really intend to use them anyway. I think this is the highest point on the entire plateau, so if you want an idea of just how can I stand on top of this? That'd be really nice. Please? If you want an idea of just how massive this world is, you can see all of those orange sticks that are sticking out of the ground. Those are all towers, just like the one that we activated here. And pretty much everything that you see on this map, and everything in between, we can visit. There's nothing preventing us from going there once we finish off the starting area here. I'm trying to get my bearings. We came from there, I think. So again, I'm going to try to restrict my use of the map beyond what I absolutely need to use it for. Which may or may not result in us getting lost. Hopefully not, but it might. And if it does, you'll have to excuse me for that. I think we're on the correct side, because the shrine should be down here somewhere. But the plateau, I never explicitly mentioned, there is no way to get down from the plateau before you do everything that the old man is prompting you to do. It is actually impossible. You can see that mist down there. If you cross into that mist, it's... I forget if it's a death plane or if it just respawns you up here, but one way or the other, you cannot pass it. And it doesn't go away until you finish what you need to do up here. And it's also the reason why, if you're speedrunning the game, that the starting area here takes I, at least half of the length of the speedrun to get through because you can just be aligned straight to the end of the game afterwards. But there's no way to pass the other stuff. So the shrine that we're looking for should be somewhere down here. There it is. The only question is, how do we get down there safely? That works, I guess. Oh, also these guys, just like Ocarina of Time, you'll have the little skeleton dudes showing up if it's still nighttime. And in here is the final rune. The last all-purpose item that we'll get up here. The last tool that we need to do pretty much anything in the game. And this rune probably has the widest range of uses throughout the game. Just because of how many different things it works on and how many different things it can be used for. Stasis. Using this will lock something frozen in time, such as this gear. If you see it yellow, you can stop it. And activating that will freeze time for whatever object you used it on. And you can also use it again to break it or to break the seal of time on whatever it is that you were using it for. And you can also use it on moving objects. Now the thing is, stasis also has a cooldown time, just like the bombs do. And I didn't mention, uh, Cryonis has a limit of how many... 
how many blocks you can have in place at once. So for Cryonauts, you can only make three ice blocks. So all of the runes have their own specific limitations. Obviously, Magnesis you can only use on one thing at a time. And Stasis... You can also build up kinetic energy in an object and then release it after you or after the stasis runs out. I think stasis has a 10 second time limit, so regardless of whether or not you unlock it manually, the object will automatically flow through time again after 10 seconds. And the longer you have an item held by stasis, the longer the cooldown will be. So if you manually unlock it from being frozen in time, whatever length of time you didn't use will be removed from the cooldown time. So if you want to use it multiple times in succession, you'll probably want to manually deactivate the time stoppage. Okay, old man is a ghost. Got it. So he told us to meet wherever the four shrines make an X, and I believe that is over here, is it? It's over here-ish. So we haven't actually been here, but it looks like it's really close to where we started. So once again, we're going to be traveling to our starting point, right back where we started. Now I'm sure even if you haven't played the game before, you can see just how versatile the stasis ability can be, considering all of the different things that you might benefit from putting into time stoppage. The one thing that is worth keeping in mind is that stasis, when you get it, does not impact any enemies. So you can't use it to freeze a bad guy in place. But it works on pretty much any other object that you can interact with. I mean, you can't interact with the tree, but if you knock down the tree and it becomes a log, then you can interact with a log. I don't know if I want this or not. Uh, I mean, we have room for it. I guess I'll take it. But pretty much any object, like the little pebbles here. I'm sure I could find other things to use stasis on. But stasis is a really, really interesting room. I mean, Magnesis and Cryonis have their specific uses, but Cryonis has no use outside of uh, flat surface water. Magnesis doesn't really serve a use if there's no metal nearby. And you can get stuff from the little ancient things hanging around, too, if you want to. Also, this guy. We haven't really fought these things much, so I might as well. And I can show that you can throw and break weapons, too. So every weapon in this game, and I mean every weapon in this game, no exception, will break if you use it too much. So if you were wondering, why are we getting so many different kinds of weapons? They're all over the place. It's like they're a dime a dozen. They all break very, very frequently. And I'll get into my feelings on that later, but for now... This thing. You may remember we've been collecting spirit orbs from the shrines that we went through. Every time we finished a shrine, we got a spirit orb. Anytime we see a goddess statue like this, we can trade four of them in for either a heart container or an extension to our stamina meter. So the spirit orbs are effectively our heart pieces, but they can also be used for stamina. As an added challenge, I will only be improving my stamina vessel until I absolutely need to start using hearts. Also, stamina is a lot more fun to use. And now that we're finished down here, the old man is going to be telling us to go back wherever he is. So because he's a ghost, he's on the roof. Because, of course, why would he come down to where us land dwellers have to walk around? No, he's going to make us climb all the way to the top. 
Again, you can climb pretty much any surface here you want. I'm using the ladder because it's probably faster. And the thing about the ladder is even if you're out of stamina, you're still able to climb a ladder. I'm not sure why they did that, but I'm thankful for the opportunity. And now we're on top of the temple. And our cold resistance is about to finally run out. Boy, that lasted a long time, didn't it? <laughs> well done there, young one. Now then, the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. I was the last leader of Hyrule. A kingdom which no longer exists. He was an old man all along! I knew it! I knew he was an old man! The Great Calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path, lo, a century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. All you did was put a robe on, come on. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. I don't know, I can kind of guess. To know Calamity Ganon's true form. One must know the story from an age-long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the divine beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the divine beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. from deep below Hyrule Castle, seize control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, and turn them against us. The champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight bravely collapsed while defending the princess. And thus, the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. 
However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final hope. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter, my dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That knight was none other than you, Link. Never would have guessed. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko village. There you will find the elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Shika slate for the precise location of Kakariko village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. So we've effectively been told Ganon's a bad guy, Zelda's trying to help, but only you can kill Ganon. So kill Ganon! And he's also giving us the paraglider, which will finally allow us to leave the plateau. It was quite literally impossible otherwise. But now that we have it, the mist is gone, so we can jump down. Hooray! And we've also been told to go to Kakariko Village to talk to Impa, but we don't necessarily have to do that if we don't want to. I mean, we can. But Destroy Ganon's really the only objective that we absolutely have to do. And with that, I think I'm going to end it off here. Before we leave, though, there is one specific thing that I want to mention. I guess I'll just climb up for a good vantage point for me to mention that. Now, since I am recording these in advance, I would very much like to... Um, can I stand up here? I can't stand up here. Okay, well, I guess we'll be here. Uh, since we're recording these in advance, I would very much like to... Mention the fact that there are four specific places that I want to go to on the map, but we won't be told about where they are until we get here. And since these are recorded in advance, I don't know how long it would be between all the stuff I want to do before I go to one of those four places and actually going to one of those four places, considering when the videos will go up. So, I will spoil the fact that there are four places that I want to go, and whoever is here will tell us that they exist. But before we get there, I want your help in telling me where to go first. So, in the video description, you'll see a link to a straw poll that has four locations on the map. One of them is in the southeast region, one of them is in the north... Oh, sorry, that's the southwest. One is in the northwest, one is in the northeast, and one is in the east. 
Now, I, again, would prefer if that isn't spoiled what is in those four locations in the comments, although you're welcome to in the uh, spoiler chat on the Discord server. Whichever one of those four areas has the most votes by the time I start recording my first session of going to one of those four will be the first direction that I go. And of course I'll do several things along the way. And whichever of the remaining three have not been chosen will get a separate straw poll to determine the second place that I go to of the remaining three. So, although I won't be taking too much in the way of suggestions of where to go and what to do, I will be accepting your suggestions as to which one to do first, but strictly from the straw poll in the video description. If you try voting in the chat, or chat like I'm streaming, if you try voting in the comments section, I will not be counting it. I'm only counting votes in the straw poll in the description. So whichever one of those has the most votes by the time I start going away from the places I'm going to next will be the first of the four places that I go. So get to voting. Until then, this is Universal Giant. I'll see you next time for more Breath of the Wild.